important if uh, in the families if you don't understand and i will ask the uh, professionals uh, to be indulgent as well if some uh, elements uh, sound simplistic we have uh, a rock star coming from orly right now professor david genevieve hello professor okay we're going to start your presentation lasts about uh, 10 minutes you have all the tools it's called the symptoms of the genetic disease and the function of the gene you've been able to uh, enlarge your panel of patients thanks to the association extraordinaire huh? let's see if your microphone is working well it has yes it works better that way yes very briefly in uh, the clinical genetics uh, departments we managed to give a diagnosis but it's not enough we also need to understand the pathology we need to understand better the life course and then it enables to give a, a proper diagnosis uh, but to do this we need uh, the support of the uh, um, patients of the carers and uh, uh, why not an association to get uh, all the association uh, together or all, all the information together so uh, the association has supported us and helped us uh, advance in our research okay so you have about 10 minutes we have justine who will be taking care of your timing over to you professor so just one word uh, it seems there's a slight uh, 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 mismatch between the screen and what I want to tell you. Okay, so a few uh, info. I want to give you a snapshot of DDX3X. Uh, so it's a genetic disease described for the first time in 2015, so not so long ago. And quickly we understood that it was a very frequent cause of uh, neurodevelopment uh, disorders in um, uh, girls or uh, women, over 150 in the literature. But uh, if uh, we probably looked at all the literature, we would have a much larger figure. But it was also described that same year, 2015, in boys, but it's not as frequent. So you can see uh, family um, uh, forms uh, uh, in boys and a schematic uh, representation of the DDX um, 3X protein uh, here. You can see the difference between boys and girls. So there must be a more important cognitive uh, approach in boys, and you can see uh, uh, development disorders in uh, uh, um, boys with uh, uh, very often an IQ below 70, uh, but it seems more frequent. Uh, so there are elements uh, of uh, autistic de uh, delay, uh, language delay, and then a whole litany of symptoms that are quite frequent, like hypotonia, or less uh, uh, frequent, like a gross delay, microcephaly, epilepsy. Okay, so this is all going to be quite detailed. Now, DD3X... X3X, what is it? It's a gene. It's part of a really wide family of genes. And sometimes our genes are duplicated through their development. That means you can have a lot of different copies, variants, one, three, X, four, etc. Three X because it's chromosome X. And here you can see the phylogeny, how these families have evolved over time. And it is there to work on a helicase RNA. We'll see that later. Now, DDX3X, where is it? On the X chromosome, of course, but on the short part of that, which is called P, on the subsection 1, 4. So XP114, that's just like the sat-nav uh, coordinates for this gene. And we can see it here. 
the DDX3X DD gene. This is how it looks. And we've identified a lot of different variants that appear here on the screen. But just a little bit of information. Here, DDX3X has a friend on the X chromosome. It's called DDXY. Now, DDX3X, this gene, the protein that's coded by the gene, where does it express itself? Well, in a lot of tissues, not just in the brain. And we can see here, of course, in the brain, in the eye, in the endocrine tissues, in the respiratory system, but also in the uh, digestive tract, so on an infection side, so through a lot of tissues. And if we were to focus on the brain and where it's expressed in the brain, well, almost throughout the brain, uh, just uh, except for the uh, corpus callosum, and he could see the different parts of the brain. I won't go into too much detail here, but suffice it to say that uh, this is how the brain looks, the cerebral cortex. This is the small brain and that uh, monitors your balance. So I'm trying to go a little bit fast now, and we're going to talk about the gene function. Then we can get some questions and we can answer those questions. So what is this gene for? What's, how is it used? So it is made on chromosomes. It's uh, localized throughout different tissues, including in the brain. But what does it do, actually? Well, we're going to see this throughout the different presentations today. It's expressed in a lot of functions. And one of the main functions is the transcription of uh, RNA. So what exactly is that? I've talked about genes. I've talked about proteins. Well, a gene is part of uh, you know, what's at the heart of chromosomes. So there are lots of different plans, lots of 20,000 genes in this core. And thank you for that information. I know I have lots of time left, uh, but I think it's good just to focus on this. This plan does not come out of the heart of the system. We need to photocopy uh, how that looks and use that then for manufacturing and changing everything. So that's where we make proteins and that's what uh, RNA is about. So this goes from the core to manufacturing part, if you like, and for different parts of manufacturing, DDX3X can help in that photocopying or copying of that plan and then help the different parts uh, be put in place because our genes have different parts and we might have different copies of that photocopy. So you need to fold that sheet of paper up and then you need to protect it and carry it outside of the core uh, towards the endoplasma uh, through the uh, nuclear pores. Uh, and it's taken to the kind of manufacturing part. It needs to go through a door. And DDX3X is there to channel it, to help fold up that piece of paper, make sure it reaches the right place. And then what happens a bit later is that plan is turned into protein. And then the other parts, the other plans are also regulated. If you have cellular stress, so a cell that is infected, we also need to deal with that. And it's also involved in immunity, as we can see here. And maybe one of the questions we might have is, do DDX3X girls and boys have more infections, repeat infections? And it's also part of embryonic development, specifically in the development of neurons during the development of the fetus. I know this is a really ugly slide, but actually it shows you the same information. DDX3X is everywhere, involved in a lot of functions, manufacture of that photocopy, carrying that photocopy uh, to another place. What happens when that gets modified, how the protein is manufactured and made and the rest. So thank you. I hope that wasn't too esoterical, too complicated. But thank you for your attention. And of course, if you have any questions, we can come back to this information and go over it. But thank you to Extraordinaire, uh, uh, the Andirard line and deficiency line, and this for this conference. Thank you, David Geneviève. So, uh, questions after Valentin, if we can, please. We would like now.